I've seen people ask, where do I put the infinite in my signal chain? Let's answer that question. It depends. Again, there are no right answers, there are no wrong answers, they're just the ways that this pedal can work for you. Let's jump straight into it, but starting off with a couple of questions that I've seen repeated uh, quite a few times. Does the loop on the infinite work with the pedal off? No, it doesn't. And the second question which is related is, is it in the main signal chain, i.e. the loop? And the answer to that one is also, no, it isn't. So whatever you put in the loop stays in the loop. Let me demonstrate that for you. Okay, we have a loop running. I have a phaser on the loop. My clear guitar signal. Okay, completely clean, no phaser on it. If I stop it, my guitar signal does not change. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's talk about where to put the infinite in your signal chain. I've got a smattering of pedals here. I've got uh, nine pedals, all from different brands, so you do not accuse me of being a fanboy of any specific brands, um, or at least I'm trying. I try to have a bit of a representation of all the stages on your signal chain. So I have the infinite, which is the infinite. Then I've got a volume pedal, which is a Hot Tone Soul Press 2. So this is a wah that also doubles up as a volume and an expression pedal. I've got a Joyo Taran, which is a clone-ish type of uh, overdrive. I've got a Vox Copperhead Drive distortion pedal working in preamp mode. So this is simulating our main amplifier for this bit of the video. On the modulation side, I've got the Nux Rocktory. You've seen the video about it, you know what it does. Boss DD200 representing time-based effects such as delay. I'm not putting reverb, I'll probably put a bit in post later. We've got a Digitech Gem and Solo XT Looper. And I've got the amazing two-note Torpedo Cab M Plus which currently it's only doing cabinet simulation so it's loading one of its IRs in this case it's a Victory 4x12 um, awesome cab simulation these three up here are kind of simulating being in the effects loop of an amp and obviously the phaser here it's only on the loop of the infinite it's just there for demo purposes of what the loop is doing so first of all infinite at the beginning of the chain what does it do well it works, but there are caveats. So let me show you. Okay, I have that sample running. Now I'm going to create a bass loop. Obviously I'm controlling all of this stuff with my hands, so if it's crap, please don't at me. Wow, didn't mess that up. If I stop my loop, sorry, if I stop the infinite, it's still there, okay? Everything's all good. So you can now layer up another thing on the infinite. So I'm going to try this. Okay, it's there, you can hear it phasing, blah, blah, blah. Now, remember that everything that comes after the infinite is affecting the sound of the infinite. So if I drop my volume pedal, this goes away. If I try to fade in a note now on the guitar, I fade everything in. If I try to use my modulation, it's also modulating whatever's coming from the infinite. And by the same token, if I try to get my overdrive in, everything comes in. Now this can be very interesting if what you're trying to do is use the infinite as an extension of your guitar. And I'm going to demo this way. A 
Of course, in this situation, you would probably use it as momentary switch controlled by your foot, so you'd only use it as a sustainer type device for the guitar. I'm obviously controlling it with my hands here, so I had to use it in latch mode and just be relatively quick. Think of it this way, if you want it to be affected by everything that comes in your signal chain, if you want to use it just as an extension of your guitar, this is probably the way of going about it. If you want to, on the other hand, layer chords that you then want to play over, this might not be where you want it. So let's move it to the other end of the chain. Back in a second. Okay, now we have the infinite close to the end of the chain. Uh, the only thing we have after the infinite is the looper, and we will talk about that in a second. So now everything that we were talking about earlier uh, kind of is flipped on its head. So the only things that will affect the sound on the infinite are the stuff that's in the loop of the infinite, i.e. in my case the phaser, or whatever I put into it. So try this again. So there's a loop, there's my phaser, and now I can do whatever I want here, and obviously nothing is going to affect it because everything's already there. So let me see if I can pull off the same lucky thing that I did with the looper earlier. Good enough for rock. Of course, I can also stop that now, because whatever I recorded there is now in the loop. Hmm. Which is a good time to talk about the relationship between the infinite and the looper. As you've heard just then, I recorded sample sustain in the infinite before I touched the looper, which was this, and then I recorded my loop. Because the sound coming out of the infinite is going into the looper, it's there. Okay, which means that it will free me up to keep putting different layers with different sounds on the infinite if I want. If you don't want that, you will have to reverse them. If you want to record your loops clean, you will need to put the looper before the infinite. But then you have another problem, because if you have your looper running when you're trying to set layers on the infinite, whatever's in your loop is going to be in the infinite. So this is something that you will have to decide for yourself. What is more important to you? Keeping a looper, keeping a loop that might have some sustained stuff on it, or having sustained stuff that is going to have loops on it. And not loops, just slices of the sound of the looper. I would prefer it in the way that I have it right here. It's more intuitive for me to create a loop with something and keep the infinite free for something else. So, like this. So that's it for today. I hope that this was useful to you in understanding how the loop in the infinite works and how it integrates in other pedals. Keep in mind that the infinite is always a serial pedal. Only use the loop for other stuff that you want affecting only the sustained tail. If you have any other questions related to how it works or how you're integrating this into your own setup, please leave them in the comments below. One last thing. What if you don't use an amp with a gainy stage and you just get your distortion from pedals and all of that stuff and you plug straight into a clean amp without using the effects loop? It works the same way. It literally works the same way. If you put it before your distortions and overdrives, your distortions and overdrives are going to affect it. If you put it after, they won't. So it's 
very much uh, decision that you will have to make as to where you want to put it. So just experiment because again, this is not a spectator sport. You have to try out the pedals in the order that you think will work, some orders that you think won't work, just so you can come up with your sounds and in the way that they will work for you. One huge thank you to everybody who has supported me so far in coffee. There are going to be links in the description box if you want to still get your infinite, if you don't have yours yet. And until the next video, bye!